Well, hello there, everybody. Hello, and welcome to my beautiful home. It is a Thursday night. It is a Thursday night, and it is a very late Thursday night. In fact, it's pretty much a Friday morning, early Friday morning. Something is up with the comments in here. Ho, ho, ho. What's up, what's up, what's up? All right. There's something about the comments on my phone. Anyway, I can still see your comments. I can still see them, but I'm gonna go over to YouTube. Who is Jacob Bull? Are you really asking that? Are you really don't know who Jacob Bull is? Okay, I will tell you who that is. But first, a message from Birch Gold. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That was a joke. I am not. All right, so I'm just gonna promote this. I'm gonna promote this. We're live on YouTube. Okay. So, all right. Hey everybody. Okay, so you know something is weird about this stream because like I see your comments but I don't see it. Like I have to do this. I have to like hold my finger on it the whole time. So So did you get my notifications tonight? So some people mentioned not getting my notification from last night from YouTube. I don't know that it was YouTube or that it was maybe my software or maybe it was your phone, but you didn't get a notification. So let me know, let me know what's going on. I uh, definitely am interested in hearing about it. Sometimes when people, controversial people's names appear on my YouTube, like either you commented with saying that person's name or it was the headline or something that I wrote, uh, YouTube will demonetize it and it's an algorithm. Like if you say the person's name that is spelled C-A-N-D-A-C-E, her last name is O-W-E-N-S. Like I don't even want to say her name because if I say it, I have a chance of this channel being demon this uh, video being demonetized. And so like I have to be careful and so Jacob Wall is also I have to be careful but the thing is that I already like I was shit faced last night when I had him on and like I already did that so I might as well just ride it through you know what I mean so all right so uh <laughs> so that's why I'm just you know whatever so we did it last night did the live stream last night okay uh had jacob wall on okay i'll tell you the story of how it happened okay so all right so you guys know my friend ford fisher ford fisher is a journalist based in washington dc ford is great ford is like he covers rallies mostly he'll go everywhere he anywhere that's a rally happening he's there and he's filming it and he's great ford is a great guy he's a libertarian uh, he, but he, you know, he talks to everybody, he hangs out with everybody. He's not, he's a real journalist. He really wants us to know and he really will go anywhere and film it. So, he's great. And, uh, Ford and I decided that we are gonna go and we were gonna go to the Trump Hotel because Jack Brookman, one of the men who accused Elizabeth Warren of BDSM rough sex with a 24 year old. Uh, so it was Jacob Wall and Jack Brookman. Those are the three people they keep, uh, they keep accusing different people of having sex with minors. But like the people they accuse are like, like Elizabeth Warren or like uh, Kamala Harris, or I think he mentioned Bernie Sanders, but I don't remember if he said, I don't remember what he said about Bernie Sanders, but it was, yeah, anyway, it's like, you know, so that's what these people do. So, so Jack Berkman put on his Twitter, uh, 930 at Trump Hotel, that's all he put, 
And so me and Ford were like, okay, well, we're going to go to the Trump Hotel and see what's happening at 930. So we go there and we see Jacob Wall. Jack wasn't there. It was just Jacob. He was standing at the bar and we're like, there's Jacob. Let's go and talk to him and see what he's up to. So we go over to Jacob and we're like, hmm, what's going on? What is he doing? And we're talking to him. Oh, and by the way, before we got to the Trump Hotel, Ford and I got together in pregame. And I drank a lot of vodka and he drank a lot of whiskey. And we were both already out. So we go to the Trump Hotel and then, you know, of course the drinking continues. It switched over to wine, okay? And then, um, and then we go and talk to Jacob and I don't know how it came up, but I was like, oh, I have to go do my live stream. But then I was like, oh, but you can be on my live stream. And he's like, oh, I would love to be in your live stream. And I was like, okay, you can be on my live stream. And so he's like, let's go and go to Jack's house and do it. Go to Jack Berkman's house and do it in Arlington. So we go to Arlington. Ford was there. So it was me, Ford, and Jacob Wall with the driver who took us to Arlington. So we go to, we go to Arlington. Okay. And we're, I was continuing to have wine. And of course I, like an idiot, I was drinking wine on the live stream. And so then, I don't know, that's what happened. Then, I, you know, Ford did a live stream with him asking questions. I did a live stream, except I was in the shot. So of course people didn't get mad at Ford because Ford wasn't in the shot, but I was in the shot. So it's like, okay, you know, people are so dumb. So, so I'm doing, I'm doing asking the questions and whatever. And I thought I grilled him. I don't know, maybe I was too drunk to remember, but like, I thought I grilled him pretty hard. I asked a lot of questions and I put, held him up to his questions. Okay. So, um, so anyway, and then, you know, like I understand people don't like Jacob Wall, but, um, you know, an interview is an, is an interview and, um, I don't care to interview people who are just random people. Like I do, but like, I, like, I have Steph on, because Steph is interesting. She brings something different to the table. Steph will say things that I don't agree with at all, but she will bring something interesting. Steph is super lefty, okay? That's fresh. That's different. That's new. You know what I mean? And, like, so, so it doesn't mean that I am endorsing everything that Steph is saying. It means that I'm bringing her on your live stream, my live stream, and my, my viewers, you guys, are, you guys are cool. Like, you guys weren't blaming me for that. But then, when I did the Jacob Wall stream, I had a bunch of people who weren't my, my viewers. I had a bunch of people who were, like, random people from the internet who saw, oh, Jacob Wall, and they decided to take it all on me. All their anger at Jacob Wall, they decide to take on me. And it's like, you don't even know me. You don't follow me. You've never watched one of my videos. By you, I mean these people who come on, who just never have, either have never heard of me or they have never watched a single one of my live streams, okay, to even know what I'm about. And they come on here and they're like, <gasps> you know, what's going on here, Jacob Wall supporter? And it's like, dude. This is, and, and your political beliefs, and it's like, dude, you guys have seen, okay, this live stream, I do this every night, and we talk about, like, random stuff, okay? Like, this is literally my first time having Jacob Ball on my live stream, and we weren't even talking about political stuff for the past few weeks. Like, I don't even know, like, we weren't, I mean, like, in general, I've been staying away from political stuff for the past few months. Like... People have noticed that. I mean, I've lost so much of my audience because of that, and I'm happy that I lost it because I we, you know, we weeded out all the haters because the very hateful kind of people are the people from Twitter because they're trolls, and like, you know, trolls are fine, but those people aren't really invested. Like, I like trolls. Like, I have some trolls on here, but they're, like, invested trolls. You know, like, they come on YouTube to watch my videos. They're not, like, 
on Twitter because Twitter is so easy like if you're on Twitter and you see my videos it's just because it popped up on your on your feed popped up in Periscope it's so easy you don't have to be invested in in any way to, to watch my Periscope videos but like YouTube you have to like actively subscribe and like watch on YouTube and it's like it's not hard once you're subscribed it's like like it shows up on your phone or whatever but still you know like YouTube people are invested and YouTube people actually see my live streams Periscope people change all the time and so like these people who are on Twitter who either never watched a single live stream or they never even followed me or heard of me until this one time they're just like being so mean to me and it just is so stupid and then I've got a lot of just random guys that like I never even talked to and like you know one of them actually apologized after my whole rant on Twitter which is really nice so like I'm not gonna bash him because he was actually really nice but then I had other people and like former colleagues and stuff and it's always like you know what like most of the people on here are men so like I can't and 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 I can't like bash men because like the truth is that like the same thing that I would complain about is also the thing that I benefit from. You know what I mean? Like, I'm complaining about guys giving me advice, but like literally, a lot of the advice I take is from guys. That has helped me in my life. Like literally the way, the reason I'm here is because of men. And so that's good. Like that's a good thing. But, ouch, but, then I got like all these people who are like, you know, you know, Jim Swift. Like, I used to work with Jim and I liked him so much, but then suddenly he like went totally just ghost on me, like unfriended me across all of social media and I was like, well, what's going on? And he 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 and he like responded to to my live stream. He's like, What happened to you, partisan? It's like go F off. What happened to you? Like, what do you mean what happened to me? I'm having a live stream with Jacob Wall. You have a problem with that? I haven't been political for the past few months. Nothing happened to me. And it's so, it's so uh, condescending. That's the word. It's so condescending. What happened to you? It's so condescending. You know what? Like, you've never watched my live streams. You've never been on, you are not even following me. You're not even on here. And you're just like, you know, oh no, and then, you know, and then I got a lot of people, and like, this is like, people I know, you know what I mean, it's like, it's like, I know them, but they're acquaintances, you know what I mean, and again, this isn't about that other guy, because he apologized, so like, I don't want to be, like, I actually really, really appreciated that, the other guy who apologized, which is like, okay, I like you. You're cool. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But just, you know, this is not a good look. I'm helping you because I don't want you to end up in this bad situation. It's like, I'll be fine without your beautiful wisdom. You know, like, you, I never talk to you. I, this is like maybe once in a year that I talk to you. If, and you don't, you know, you don't watch my stuff. You're not even like a viewer. Like, if one of you guys, my viewer, okay, my viewers, like, I have viewers every night and I have viewers every night and uh, my favorite viewers are my YouTube viewers because I know all of them by name and I know like I know who everyone is and um, and like the YouTube viewers are really invested and I appreciate that and I really care about the YouTube people. If one of the YouTube people came and was like, Pardis, you need to do this. If like one of my actual fans was like, Pardis, you should do this. Or really anyone who was following me. If anyone who's like, you know, like a fan, not just like, you know, happened to be there, a fan was like, Pardis, I need you to do this. I would literally be like, that's a great idea. I'm gonna do it. Or maybe I'll consider it. You know why? Because my fans are the ones that I want to please. I don't care about pleasing some random people that don't watch my stuff, don't care, and they just, it's like they just saw Jacob Wall pop up on the screen and they're like, oh, we need to, 
we need to fix this. This bad thing's gonna happen to you. It's like, you know what I mean? Hotep says, props to the guy who apologized. Respect for how you handle the whole wool thing. I subbed after. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Hotep. Farty uh, says I have to hold my iPad to my face. Don't don't worry. Um, you're great. You guys are great. I see I see you Periscope people. Um, so I really appreciated it, and then I felt bad because I bashed a bunch of guys. <laughs> see, I just got another message saying, "Am I mansplaining?" <sighs> <laughs> See, I just messaged someone else back. I just, I just message another person back. So, so people feel self-conscious when I do that, you know, so it's not nice. Like, I'm just, you know, whatever. People feel self, people feel self-conscious and then they're like, oh no, like, am I doing that? Am I being mansplaining? It's like, no, no, it's, it's really not you. Like, I promise. Um, and so I made a video saying that mansplaining is inherently a man thing and I didn't mean it to say like unsolicited advice is a man thing. It's just, I meant it to say that a mansplaining like in terms of like voluntarily trying to go and solve problems is a masculine thing just because men are problem solvers. Like men, men solve problems. That's literally their nature. That's their biological nature. So yeah like i that's what i meant like yeah it's a masculine thing because men are biologically inclined to solve your problems they're biologically inclined to like come over and be like you know what's your problem let me fix it which is a good thing so i wasn't you know i wasn't being like only men give unsolicited advice it's just that's what i was saying but i have hurt many met many guys by doing that so like I feel bad because now I have a bunch of guys who just genuinely are like like are you talking about me like and like I don't want to make people feel self-conscious so I feel really bad about that Felix says at least men don't do the clapping between each word on PC so can't do emoji <laughs> um, Janet says men are fixers Yes, men are fixers. And so I think it's just like a difference between men and women thing. Um, but yeah, it's like such a pet peeve. Like I get so pissed off, especially, you know what it is? A lot of it is also just political stuff. Like there's a group of people in Washington, DC. I don't know what to call them, like mainstream people that they're so into cancel culture. This is, this is someone, someone brought this up. Can't, cancel culture all this like guilt by association and it's just like oh no we can't associate with this person we can't associate for that person and so like if you talk to somebody who talked to somebody who's controversial this group of people will create an environment of like oh no we have to treat you like you have the ebola virus and we can't go anywhere near you because you're just like you're just gonna give us the virus. Ugh. Stay away from me. And so like, <sighs> yeah, like say say that. Stay away from me. People are saying that I should bring bring Nick Fuentes on my live stream. Um, here's. The brutal honest truth, the brutal honest truth is, 
And I will preface this by saying, as a Jewish brown woman who is actually like all over the place ideologically and my lifestyle is would be very condemnable by somebody like Nick Fuentes. As somebody like that, I think having a live stream with Nick would actually be very fun. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. Uh, you know, because like, as I said, you want interesting people on your live stream. That's interesting. Oh, but the guy, he hates the Jews and he hates women and he hates gays and he hates, uh, you know, he hates everything. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, that's just me. So you don't have to, you don't have to agree with me, but you also don't have to treat me like I have the Ebola virus, okay? So, all right. So people are asking who's Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes, <laughs> you can Google Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes is, uh, he just, uh, he doesn't like the G. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm kidding. I don't know how to describe Nick Fuentes. Uh, but he's actually very, very entertaining. I'm just gonna put put it that way. Very entertaining. Because I watch his live streams. Um, and, like, I feel like there's so many clips out there on the internet that people are already gonna take out of context that I feel like it's just too late for me to, you know, watch what I say because everything I say is gonna be taken out of context. Like, no matter how many... No matter how Doe says, I have a feeling I'd rather not Google him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, um, he's, he is, like, I don't even know how to describe him. But, uh, the nice thing about Nick Fuentes is that although Nick doesn't like, the, is it that he doesn't like Jews or he, like, I forget, he doesn't like Zionists, but I think Zionist he means Jews like he doesn't like Jews, but I Don't even remember why but on one of his live streams. He told his fans To follow me and to watch my stuff and I was just like what? Like I was like this is actually really cool <laughs> Like he's he's allowing me to like influence his viewers Which is very 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 interesting very interesting and pretty cool actually and here's the thing and this is this is this is the thing about these people uh somebody like jacob wall people who are controversial bad press people um those people tend to be very very open like they're not they're like the kid in high school that everyone's like oh no like that kid eats his boogers stay away from that kid and it's like everybody like stays away from that kid but, and then if you go and, if you go, oh, someone is saying Nick hates Richard Spencer. Um, <laughs> someone is saying that's, a, I have a lot of, I have a lot of, uh, Dove says he probably has no idea what Jews and Zionists really are. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people who talk about Zionists and Jews, like, they really, like, they, they, they think of, like, Amy Schumer. They think of Amy Schumer and they're like, the Zionist. <laughs> it's like Amy Schumer, like is Amy Schumer even, like there's so many people who like, oh yeah, like my grandfather is Jewish, so like, yeah. But like n nobody actually practices Judaism, that, that, you know, kind of that story. So whatever. Um, but yeah, so what was I saying? There's, there's like a lot of these people who are like the kids who eat their boogers, which like, yeah, eating your boogers is really gross and like you should not do that and you should not like influence anybody to eat their boogers, okay? Um, but if you are like seen with the booger kid, then everybody's also gonna like, like not have anything to do with you. And so it's kind of like that culture. 
and so it really bothers me when that happens, but at the same time, it really bothers me, it really bothers me when that happens. If like, I'm literally interviewing Jacob Wall. I'm not inter agreeing with anything he said. I don't agree with a single thing Jacob Wall says. You should watch the interview. He was saying, he was saying that it's okay for men to cheat on their wives, but it's not okay with women to cheat on their husbands because it's not natural. Like that was literally his argument that it's okay for men to cheat on their wives, women to cheat on their husbands. You think I agree with that? You think I endorse that in any way? No, it's called interviewing the guy. And I, I was like asking him more to elaborate on that. It's called interviewing somebody, okay? It's called wanting to know how they think. Why do you think this? How are you thinking this? What got you to start doing what you're doing? Why? Right? And so like, how? How did you get this information? Do you really believe it in your heart? Is it something that you really believe or you're just putting on a show? Like, what's going on? Okay? It's important to ask these questions. And so, like, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. And the truth is, and the truth is, someone is saying why someone is beefing you over this is beyond me. I know, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm actually messaging someone. Okay. See, I, I've made people uncomfortable. I made a lot of men uncomfortable, okay? I made a lot of men uncomfortable with my comments and um, so now I'm text I'm messaging men. Thank you, JD, for your support. Thank you. Uh, so I'm messaging men saying, um, no, that was kind of pissy. Like, I don't want you to feel that way. I don't want you to feel like you're mansplaining or whatever. And the truth is, like, I message guys all the time asking for advice. And I want them to give it to me. And sometimes they message me. And, like, the truth is, like, I don't even know just sometimes it's just that, like it comes out of nowhere and they say it in a way that feels like very judgmental so I don't even know but I but the way I said it like I made so many men feel uncomfortable and like like oh no like am I you know I don't I don't want you to feel like I'm imposing on you or whatever and I'm just like no don't feel that way I feel so bad now you know don't feel that way don't like really don't because um the truth is that I really, really feel lucky to have the men in my life. Uh, Safan says, it's really easy to make men uncomfortable. Tell them you want to get married. <laughs> Hazu says, I studied biology. He does have a basis, male biology program for many wives, female females wire for family less mates it's homo sapien look this is this is what i'm gonna say this is what i'm gonna say as a woman i would not date anybody who is thinks that way uh and if you're a woman who would then you know good for you having a lot of uh just I don't know, good for you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else to say, you know? Like... <laughs> I, I, don't even, I don't know what else to say. I can't imagine ever being cool, like, 
marrying somebody and being like, it's not fine if I cheat, but it's fine if you cheat. You know, like, I can't imagine ever being in that sort of relationship and being fine with it. It would, it would just be so weird to me. <sighs> like, maybe people will be fine with it in, like, the Middle East or Eastern Europe or, like, Africa. You know, a lot of women, a lot of women, like, in the Middle East or Africa, like, I was talking to this guy who is, he's from Ghana. No, he's from... I don't remember the name of his country, but it's like in Africa and he he came back from there and he said that like anytime he goes back, the women there will like no matter who you are or what you have to offer, they just want to marry you. And they don't even care like if you had like a totally different life outside of them, like they wouldn't even care. They just want to marry you because they just they just want a roof over their head. And they just want something. You know what I mean? And it's like Okay, I guess if you're one of those women who's like totally dependent and you know the guy can have like five or six of you like and you're fine with it like as long as you have a roof over your head but like you actually don't give a shit about him in any other way <laughs> you know like I don't know. I personally would want to be with someone I love and is in love with me and that I'm in love with them and like that I'm not in their harem and that I'm not there for their, you know, to have a roof over my head because I already have my own money and I'm fine by myself and I'm just there because I love him, you know, and we're in a committed relationship or marriage. Like, like I just think the whole idea of like I just don't like that whole like it's it's like it's like beyond traditional it's not even traditional it's like it's uh it's like ancient ancient uh Tinkerbell says some people don't have the luxury of choice that you have that's true they don't very glad that I'm not them somebody is saying thoughts you don't have to be a thought to not want to be in a harem Okay. Uh, someone is saying, where does a guy find a good libertarian woman? Are they real? Are libertarian women real? I don't know. A lot of women are... Actually, one thing that Jacob was right about, he said a lot of women are malleable politically. And that's probably... Like, a lot of women don't care about politics. So it's like, you know, they'll take up whatever politics. Because uh, we really don't care. I personally don't care about politics. I really like I say that I care about politics but it's like at the end of the day the only reason I care about politics is because I am in this world like I know all the people I just I like ended up here okay and then I was just taking jobs and then the people were referring me to different jobs and all the different you know friends that I was making just like people referring me to each other they were all within this like bubble and so that's how I know all these people because they're all in the political bubble and so, like, I could technically move to a new city and become friends with people in that city. And, like, I would not be making friends based on political views in any way. I wouldn't give a shit. Like, I really wouldn't care. And my friends now are not, like, I've made friends, like, outside of that. And my, they're not, they're not all, like, one-sided. In fact, my friends now are the perfect group because they're just all different kinds, all different views. And that's great. I love it. Dove says that his wife never talks politics. I feel like a lot of women are like that. Like, people are like, you know, what's a good, you know, a woman who believes this and that? And it's like, in terms of politics, like, I don't know. Like, you know, women are religious. A lot of women are religious. Like, that's easy to find. But I don't know if you'll find, like, I don't know if a lot of women are going to be, like, all obsessed about, like, you know libertarianism the way that you are and that's fine like you could be very very like I don't know it depends on what you like uh, maybe you want to be able to have like more conversations about it with your 
wife in that case, there are a lot of libertarian women. Like, now that I think about it, there's a lot of libertarian women. Uh, Keila says that's the best thing to have is a multi-structured group of people across all the thought ideological spectrum. So one thing that I am really lucky for is that, like you guys and the people who are here, the people who follow me, um, mostly in my live streams because the live streams are more personal. Like those people don't really care what I say. Like I could say anything and like you might push back, but it's kind of because I talk about everything and I, t I don't have like an ideology. But that's like a something that I'm very happy with because it just, I don't want to be limited to, I don't want to be limited to somebody else's ideal. Like I do have an ideology, but it's like my own, like whatever I believe is my ideology. Like I don't want to be limited to somebody else's doctrine. So the nice thing about my follow, my viewers is like, they get that and they're just like, okay. And so Jason says, I found, I find more women care, I found, I find women care more about the values you stand for instead of politics. Not Donna Brazil says, I'm classic liberal, my best friend has, and his wife are super left. I think that's good, you know, like, honestly, it's just such a joke, you know, like, honestly, I think all these politicians, even like the ones you care about and you love and whatever, I mean, they have to be exploiting you. They're exploiting you whether or not like they want to. They literally have to exploit you for votes. And so they have to make you, they need there to be division. They need to make you think that they're something different than the other, than their opponent. And the truth is, all of these people are the same garbage. Like, like, I have been, like, I live in D.C., okay, and I'm like, la di da di da di da okay? I'm friends with a lot of people in the inner circles and the inner workings of things, okay? I know that they're all bullshit. Now I'm going to get demonetized because I said that word, okay? I said BS. You know what? It's all garbage, okay? And like the fact that people think that like they're supporting the right side or the bad side, trust me, all sides are garbage. They're all garbage, okay? So like that's why I'm not gonna waste friendships. I'm not gonna miss out on friendships and nice relationships and my happiness just because like, you know, just just to just for something that doesn't exist like just is something that doesn't exist someone is saying the global jew the globalist jews the global jews <laughs> uh, felix says half the politicians don't even believe their ideology exactly they have to make you think that they believe it so that you should vote for them on that platform Exactly. Carl Lust is in Las Vegas and he's staying at the fancy hotel called the Wynn Encore and he's trying to make everybody jealous. Thank you, Carl, for making us all jealous. Should I should I do a vlog about Las Vegas? <laughs> Dove says if only I had a piece of that globe. Yeah, Dove, that belongs to me. That piece of the globe belongs to me. Um, yeah, so, 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 so vlog in Las Vegas, which I haven't planned, I haven't planned any of these trips yet. Like, I have planned them, but I haven't bought any of my tickets yet, which is so annoying. Like, it's crazy. So, I'm going to London, I'm going to Peru, Peru and London are confirmed, and Peru, in fact, I'm taking a class there, so, like, there's no way that I can't, that I'm not going to be going to Peru. Like, I have to be going for my class, and I already paid for my class thousands of dollars. Uh, it's not my own money. I paid in loans, but I'm still paying it because I pay my loans back every month, which is kind of a, kind of a hassle. But anyways, student loans, MBA, okay, because I'm not, in, I'm not an undergrad. But anyways, so Peru, London, and... Uh, so I want to do Vegas at some point, but I want to do that with friends because it's not fun to go to Vegas if you're by yourself. That's not fun. 
So another thing that I want to do, and I'm thinking, I'm wondering what you, your guys' opinions are, is I want to go to hell. I want to go to hell. <laughs> There's a city in Michigan called Hell, and it's an, about an hour away from Detroit, and it's actually really beautiful. Like, I was looking at the pictures and stuff. Hell is actually really beautiful. And so I want to take a trip to hell, but get this. I want to take a trip to hell two days before Halloween. Isn't that cool? Someone is saying Peru rocks. I've been there taking ayahuasca with the shamans. Ooh. Diacritical, road trip to hell. Should I take a road trip there? Have you ever taken, have you ever road trip to hell? To, to Detroit? To Michigan? You know, I feel like I should do like a planned trip with a bunch of people. Cause the truth is like, I just like, I want to do all these trips, but I don't want to do it by myself. And I feel like, uh, like I don't want to take trips by myself, whatever. So what if we just, what if, what if everybody took a trip together? What if we planned something? That'd be pretty cool. Um, the, tr the tickets actually, people are talking about like driving to Michigan. Honestly, the tickets to Detroit are $84. Spirit Airlines, 84 round trips. So like, it would be cheaper if I just flew there. Like people are like, oh, but I can't afford a flight. Dude, if you were to drive there, it would be more expensive. <laughs> Felix says I wet my, met my wife in hell. Yeah, it's like you can you can have your wedding in hell also. Like it's beautiful. People have their weddings in hell. And they're like, oh yeah, we consummated the marriage in hell. And we, you know, what are the good things to do in hell? So I, so I was thinking of going there and doing like a whole vlog. Like here's what people do in hell. And this is what life in hell is like. And it's actually really nice. And you know, there's trees and everything. There's like a, you know, they have, they have, a, they have a restaurant there called a hell hole. <laughs> it's funny. Oktoberfest in Munich next year. Okay, guys. Guys, guys, guys. Can you guys Tell me, tell me where you want me to go. Like, honestly, tell me, because you're watching my vlogs. Nobody yeah. else watching my vlogs. You're watching my vlogs, so you're going to know what, you're going to know where I should go. Okay. I'd rather go to the Civil War in Nicaragua than Detroit. You think I should go to the Civil, to Nicaragua? Go to Northeast Syria? I should write this down. Go to Nicaragua. Northeast Syria. Why are you telling? Why are you sending me to such serious places? If you guys pay for my ticket, I would go to Nicaragua and like I would go wherever you want me to go. If you pay for my ticket, but I would pay for my own ticket to hell. It's like I would pay for my own ticket to hell, but if you want me to go to somewhere else, if you pay for my ticket, I'd go. You want me to go back to LA? My parents would love you for saying that. Uh, someone is asking if I stream on Twitch. I am actually streaming this on Twitch at the same time, but I don't really know how to use it. So from what I understand, Twitch, you can, you can monetize on Twitch. Someone is saying I should go to Skid Row and live stream from Skid Row. You think I should crowdfund plane tickets to wherever you want? Someone is saying go to Somal Somalia outside of the capital where Islam rules the most. Adam says go swimming in the Niagara Falls. Silence is saying, why do you live in white nations? <laughs> okay, so whatever you guys want me, whatever you guys want me to go, I will. I will go. You just have to pay for my ticket. Diacritical says Twitter, Twitch has the best video and audio quality. You know, that's what I noticed, like Twitch always is, is like the, the one that works. Even in like a bad internet connection, Twitch always works. So that's why I, uh, yeah. So, you know, I like, 
I want to go to a lot of places, but the truth is, like, the thing that I'm using to pay for some of these flights is literally, like, my credit card rewards, but I'm going to run out of those. And I don't want to be paying for, like, these expensive flights, like, just on my own because I'm, you know, still, I'm still saving and I'm not, like, really financially stable right now. So... And like, I just feel weird asking for money because people are like, oh, you're a grifter, you know, if I ask for money. But I still wanna do these vlogs and I still wanna go places. Like, I don't even know what else to do. JF says, I'm down for 10 bucks towards your all expense paid trip to Pyongyang. Why do you want me to go to Pyongyang? Okay. Area 51, Wang Dong. Wang Dong, collect cans. <laughs> I'm reading some really funny comments but okay so so uh yeah I guess I could do so everyone wants me to go to a hardcore place so which hardcore place should I go to okay Syria North Korea and Nicaragua do you want do you want to see me go to hell? Nobody wants to see me go to hell. People want to see me go to Lancaster, right? But you want me to go to like a hardcore place. So you want me to go to Chilin. Chilin. Okay, so Yeah, if you want me to go to North Korea. Go to El Salvador. Okay, so like I want to get people to crowdfund trips, but I just feel weird getting people to crowdfund trips. So, all right, let's go to Amish country. Go to Amish country and interview them. Yes, I want to go to Amish country. Someone is saying, y'all want her to go to a hardcore place, go to Liberty City, Miami, Florida, then you can hit up South Beach on the side. <laughs> go to Ramallah and shout, long live Zionism. <laughs> uh, yeah, someone is saying that they found me on Twitch, but Twitch doesn't, I don't have a lot of viewers on Twitch. I don't, I don't like know how to use Twitch yet, so I guess I can do that. I just, I don't know how to use it well, so well. So maybe I will. Maybe I will. We'll we'll make quick. We'll make Twitch. Someone is saying you won't be the first one to crowdfund your trip. All right. Okay. So so people are saying that I should go over to Twitch. Um. So here's another thing. So I'm 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 on Twitch right now. I'm checking it out. I'm seeing. Hey, I see myself. All right. We've got like two viewers on Twitch. Okay. So someone is saying you should come on my live stream, on my stream and chat. I'm a political streamer. Okay, I'd be down. Hey. All right. So. Yeah, so definitely want to learn how to do this tr Twitch Twitch thing more, okay? And uh, if you guys have any, like, I don't know how to do the crowdfunding thing for trips, so I want to hear your ideas. This is soliciting advice, me soliciting advice. Send me your ideas. Um, if you think that there's, if you have, like, yeah, just, just tell me how people do it, because I don't know. I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people crowdfund their trips. I know people do it, but I just, I, like, I feel like impolite going and asking them, like, you know, how do you get your money? So tell me how people do it. All right.
right? Someone is saying go to Uzbekistan. T uh, you know, send me, send, you know, tell me, tell me how people do it. Um, you know, like right now I've just got like PayPal. <laughs> Right now, I just got PayPal. I see more people are on Twitch. Uh, LCTR fan says, my idea is start streaming in Twitch. Put up a goal of a trip and money will flow in to support your trip. So you put a goal on Twitch. How do you do that? How do you put up a goal on Twitch? That's really interesting. Okay, I guess that's how people do it. So, uh, <laughs> Felix says throw a dart on a map and go where it lands. Strider says come to Brooklyn and interview, interview the Hasidim. Go to India for tech support. You know, like, hello, my name is Jennifer. And it's like, no, your name is not Jennifer. You're like on the phone with like Comcast or whatever. Okay. My name is Caitlin. Okay. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I feel like this is, okay. Depends on your streaming program. All right. Okay. So, so I'm getting a lot of different ideas for trips. So many, so many. I don't even know, like, don't even know how, I don't even know how to put it together. But definitely the UK and then any other European country that goes with that. Definitely Peru and probably gonna go to hell. Although if you guys don't, are not interested in that, then I won't go to hell. But, I mean, hell seems like a good, easy trip. It's, like, also cheap, so I won't need to, like, crowdfund it so much. Um, Diacritical says Tokyo. Go to Armenia and tell them to get over the Turkish genocide. Someone says Poland. Okay. All right. Tokyo. Tokyo, Tokyo. Thank you, LCTR fan, for hosting me on the channel. On your channel. Thank you. And so, yeah. I mean, there's so many different ideas. And, like, I don't even know what to do. But I know that I'm definitely going to be blah vlogging for a while. And someone is saying that no one is interested in me going to hell. <laughs> No one wants me to go to hell. That's so nice of you guys. So, uh, yeah. It's just, I know definitely that I'm going to be doing this for a while. I know that I'm definitely going to be, definitely going to be going to, like, doing a lot of these vlogs and making videos and doing these live streams because it's, like, the one thing, the one thing that I enjoy. Oh my gosh. It's like, yeah, all right. Someone is saying go to Cuba. So yeah, this is this is the one thing I enjoy. Um, I took so many different jobs. I took like corporate jobs and like the thing about corporate Washington DC, like I mentioned with the, the Jacob Ball thing, like People are so, like, there's, like, a really strong cancel culture, so people are so, like, they, they're so just, like, very stuffy, and anything you do can mess up your, like, reputation. Like, any tiny little thing that you say or do or any person that you communicate with or whatever, and so, and so you can get in trouble very quickly. Um, so I just kind of don't like it and I don't like how stuffy everything is and how depressing it is and, like people have to stay in an office all day and the truth is I work really fast so, like at my previous jobs like I would get everything done in the first hour or two hours and then or and, and it 
I would just be sitting around the rest of the day and people, you know, my employers would be like, you know, so it looks like you don't want to be here. And like, the truth is that I got all my work done in the first hour or two and the rest of the day, I'm just like pretending to be working. So it's just, I don't know. I just don't like it. It's very frustrating. And my most enjoyable job ever was working at a restaurant. Like none of the other jobs were fun. Again, I worked in media, I worked at, I worked in TV, I worked in like, you know, all sorts of different jobs. Um, so Fawn says, how are you not financially stable? Uh, well, I'm not working a traditional 9 to 5 job anymore, so I have to hustle for my money. And that's fine, but it's also kind of scary because I don't know when the next thing is. LCTR fan says streaming and travel vlogging is life. I'm gonna LCTR flat fan. I'm gonna get in touch with you after this live stream because I want to see how you do it. I want to talk to you. All right. Someone else is saying it's called entry. You start having a good time after. Uh, okay. Good night, diacritical. This live stream is actually almost over, so. So, uh, you won't miss much. Thanks for talking, Jacob Wall. It was good to see him exposed for what he is. Uh, LCTR fan, yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm reading your comments. And yeah, so, so Jacob, you know, the truth is, Jacob was very, it was a very good interview, I think. I think he was very cooperative. And he was very, he was very welcoming. We went to the place, we went to the house. Uh, where he did it and uh, you know welcoming he was very cooperative he was very like you know cool with us interviewing him <coughs> which was really cool um, and I just the thing that got me upset was like people people were directing their anger at him at me which is not cool which made me upset. Adam says, thought you hated unsolicited advice from men. I literally ask somebody to give me advice and you're like, I thought you hated unsolicited advice from men. Like, I literally just asked somebody to give me advice. I literally was like, please give me your suggestions. And you're like, eh, you know, I thought you hated unsolicited advice. Do you know what the meaning of unsolicited is? Do you know what the meaning of unsolicited? The meaning of unsolicited is not me asking you for advice, okay? Thank you. Okay. <sighs> what did you want? So Nate says, how was it working at IJR? <laughs> Nate says, <sighs> Nate is asking how I liked IJR. IJR was fine. I mean, is IJR still up now? I don't know. IJR, like, they're all the same. They're all the same. All these media outlets, they're like corporate, you know? Um, but, and they're trying to like go together with that corporate culture, but it's really hard to do that when you're, you know, you, have this ideological thing going on like I don't know I don't even know but Ira says you should force that exact conversation with men so so like I'll be like I'll be like yeah I don't like getting unsolicited advice and then I get like a bunch of guys that I normally ask advice from to like you know it's like I literally said unsolicited I didn't say like you people that I normally am constantly asking advice from. Okay. All right, 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 right. Okay, thank you everybody. <laughs> that was such a weird stream because I was looking in the screen the whole time and asking everybody for advice the whole time. I was literally just staring at the screen and asking, for your suggestions the whole time. 
So I'm gonna, all right. Thank you for joining my live stream. See you all tomorrow night. Tomorrow is Friday. See you all tomorrow night. You know, maybe I'll bring a, on a guest. Let me know who you want me to come on as a guest. Uh, yeah, let me know who you want me to come on as a guest. Like, you know, this time a different person, a different type of person, not Jacob, different, per different person. And so let me know, let me know what you want. Uh, see you all tomorrow night. And uh, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, add me on Twitch, and I will see you all tomorrow.